Hello, everyone, and welcome to Audience Segmentation and Optimizing Spot TV. We're very glad to have a large audience registered for today's Working Lunch webinar. Our moderator today, thank heaven, is Janet Stilson, once again, contributing editor to TV News Check. Janet, please go ahead and begin whenever you're ready. Hey, everyone. I am thrilled to be here. It's always fascinating to find out about a section of the advertising industry that I think everyone on the panel will agree is kind of under construction, certainly in the TV station advertising space. And we're very lucky to have um, people from three different segments of the industry to give us their particular vantage points. And so I'm, I'm anxious to get started. I'm not gonna give you a huge long introduction because what's more important is for you to hear what they have to say. But before I introduce them, I wanna let you know that um, I'm gonna be asking them questions for about the first 40 minutes. And then I'm gonna open it up to questions from you all in the audience. I understand there's over 500 of you registered. Um, please drop your questions in the Q&A box as opposed to the chat box, because I won't be looking at chat. Um, and then we'll get to them around the, the um, 40 minute mark. And my suggestion is to wait until we've talked a while. So, because it may be that we've answered your questions in the course of talking amongst ourselves. You're also gonna be seeing some poll questions pop up from time to time. And uh, likely I'm gonna just ignore them, but please vote vote often um, and because we'd really like to know um, what you're doing in the, in the space of optimization and segmentation, two huge words, and um, we're gonna get into them. Um, so without further ado, in alphabetical order, we have John Camera, who's VP of Northwest at Disney Ad Sales Local, Missy Evanson, VP Sales Local Media at EW Scripts, Heather Gundry, SVP Group Director at Dentsu X, and Will Offerman, Chief Product Officer at Wide Orbit. So I thought uh, to get things going, I would just throw a question to you, Heather, to just define what those two words mean, optimization and segmentation, just so that we all have it sort of in our minds. Yeah, thanks, Janet. And good afternoon to everyone that's joined us on this conversation. At the core, segmentation and optimization really go hand in hand when providing a successful campaign to any one of our clients. Our industry, as you know, has evolved tremendously over the last decade. And now more than ever, the challenge is really to learn how to optimize those media dollars in this new environment by not only reaching those targeted customers, but doing it with minimal waste in going forward for all of our brands. Segmentation allows us to separate the consumers really into two categories. Sometimes it's broad, sometimes it's more defined, and really focus on reaching those customers, not only with brand loyalty, but really to look at conquesting some consumers in each category overall. While we've historically been able to segment you know, consumers by demographic, whether it be women and men or adults, um, 25 to 54 year old, the industry has emerged into not only psychographic segmentation, but behavioral based targeting as well. The ability to segment for us, it allows us to reach our target audience more efficiently and more effectively at the end of the day. And at the center of every plan that we do for, is all about the audience and defining who that audience is. It's critical right now that we're doing that on a day to day basis. Optimization, on the other hand, it really does start with that segmentation or knowing that audience in insight, who it is, where they are at, when we're trying to reach them with that brand mention or brand um, message. And as I mentioned, the audience is the center of every one of our plans. We need to optimize each campaign, each message, each dollar to really ensure we're continuing to reach that audience. Optimization is really more about maximizing our media value rather than just minimizing the media cost and striving to allocate at the end of the day, that message to the medium, the media partners, and who it is out there that offers the strongest impact and results. Okay, so um, I'd also like to uh, find out from the other panelists if there's any other aspects of segmentation or optimization that you would throw into the mix. Uh, John, is there just, just 
do you do? I mean, I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Either. And I, I, you know, for us, it's just creating the largest possible groups that are different from each other, right? And then within a universe and then um, aligning our clients with, with those groups. And then for optimization, it really is just connecting the, you know, the most amount of people um, uh, with those groups and then with the least amount of waste, as you said. Now, waste for us is subjective, right? In some cases, um, with, with, or in most cases with linear um, and, and local television waste, um, we know that we're planting a seed, right? So, so while we think maybe possibly it doesn't hit exactly the target that we're looking for, we, are, we do want to be the first voice in their ear and to bring that forward at a future date. So, you know, the, the, what might look like waste, and this is part of the topic today, what might look like waste initially could help us for, uh, for future um, um, and potential buyers down the road for, to, to move products. So it is a little subjective, but I agree with it wholeheartedly on that. What's your view, Will? Would you add anything to those definitions? Um, it's spot on. I mean, spot TV uh, basically uses content as a proxy to an audience. I mean, the core question for everyone is what's the right audience to target? You know, everyone sort of preaches the right audience at the right time with the right message. Spot TV is a little bit different. It reaches a common audience at a common time with a shared message. And I think that's incredibly important. That reach vehicle is unsurpassed anywhere. And I think it's going to be vitally important as uh, we go through this to realize that you're getting a lot of extra viewers for the audience that you're buying. And you're gonna basically index that audience based upon whatever custom data that you have. And everything we're doing at Wide Orbit is to try to make this process easier so that when you're going through proposals, when you're going through the stewardship modules, everything else, you can get full credit for what you've delivered using probably the historical age gender from Nielsen, but as well as getting the reads as to how those sort of custom audiences are going, as well as um, tools to help optimize the actual placement and scheduling as well. But I think the definitions are perfect. Any thoughts for the thoughts on that, Missy? I think everybody's touched on it. I would just add that, you know, from the broadcaster side, it's right inventory inventory for us is finite. So when, you know, when everybody talks about segmenting audience, I think for us, the challenge knowing that inventory is finite is having real strategy to help our agencies and our buyers really focus in on who they're trying to segment. And sometimes being able to make a gutsy call that I'm not trying to sell 2020 to everybody. I've got to get smarter about who really needs maybe that one 2020 and maybe maybe a news magazine's not the same for all maybe dateline needs to be a little bit different than a 2020 but i think sometimes we get so focused as broadcasters trying to we got to sell out everything to everybody um I, I think we really need to pay attention to the data and and be a little more wise with with what we're selling and to whom and get more focused on the outcome of that instead of trying to just solve everything all the time for every single buy. I think, I think that's what creates weights on our uh, waste on our end. Yeah, I think, I, think makes a great better. I think Missy makes a great point there and that the more data driven we can, we can get it, it, it might open up, up our whole schedule even more so. It might give us an opportunity to bring in other parts of our schedule as opposed to just the most popular based on a rate based on ratings, right? What hits that target? What makes more sense for, for an advertiser to, to be in is not just always the same thing that's the most popular. So that's a great point, Missy. Well, I also think um, that it you can look at any station and any programming, and while it may not do excellent ratings against an adult 2554 demo, the content itself leads it to be a place where we should be for our clients. So taking an example of a men demo, golf on uh, cable, on Saturdays and Sundays may not do well against adults 25 to 54. But if you're looking to target that men demo, which really is in the market for watching sports or gambling or doing anything along the men demo, it really does show that that should be the place that our spot should be located at. Interesting. I wanted to, to find out from our two station group executives, kind of, I'd like to get kind of a snapshot of where you were a year ago and where you are today to just sort of figure out how things are moving along. Um, 
John, you want to give us a sort of a before and present day view? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and answer it as best as possible. I think, you know, first I'll preface this by saying, you know, we've been able to do, uh, to do this and, and data-driven linear um, sales for decades. We, we, it's something that we've, we've been able to do for a long, long time. And, um, you know, we've had access to great syndicated data and we, we all do, and we use that on an everyday basis. As that data gets better and better, uh, that's the future. I think we can, we can uh, definitely get more specific. So uh, we've been able to do it for a long time. Uh, I think the effects of what's happened over the last year has propelled us to, to be more focused on it. But um, you know, I have, we have some one sheets from 20 years ago we can show you that was pretty data specific. Uh, so it's there and it's available. I think the clients are asking for it more. Um, I think that the fact that uh, we, we are going to, uh, we're in a world now that local is so uh, important and the last year has shown how important local is, be it the pandemic or everything that's going on within our markets with political, uh, that we have, we have been, uh, we've never been more, more in focus. Uh, and companies like mine with Disney that we are, so um, uh, invested in local, both with our own television stations and with uh, with Hulu uh, local, that we are now Disney ad sales local. We sell everything local. So we're invested in the business. Uh, but as far as linear only, well, we've been able to do it for a long, long time. It's just coming more and more into the forefront, uh, forefront now. Missy, give us an idea. What are you doing today versus what you were doing a year ago when it comes to segmentation and optimization? Um, not being a smart aleck, but I would just say building dashboards, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds to John's point, we've increasingly over the last, especially I would say two years, um, accumulating data, right, in a massive data lake. And now it's figuring out the best, most efficient ways to extract it to get the best outcomes. So it's... Um, it's building out the tools we need to really use the data to create outcome. Um, so it's a lot of stuff that at times is not so salesy, but it's, it's, it's good solid development work right now. Um, getting uh, sellers access to data in ways that they understand it to best help their customers. Um, and it's a lot. Salespeople, um, you know, they, they don't have the degrees that students have today, right? In data and analytics. So it's a pretty big hurdle when you think about, okay, we've got all this data, we can get you access to it, but then developing sellers, and Heather probably has the same challenge, you know, on her side, it's like getting, getting both buyers and sellers to understand how to, view, uh, how to view it and use it in an accurate fashion is something I think that we're super focused on. I also think Heather touched on this earlier. I think it's super important right now. It's that, you know, look, the planning side of our buying uh, uh, of the buy side, right? Planners still have to consider either Comscore or Nielsen. I mean, depending on what agency you're with, but as, as sellers, we're like, we're all about segmenting audiences or whatever, but Heather said it best. The best show for them may be something that does a point one. Um, but it may create the best outcome in bringing all the data and, and all that information into one space um, to get those types of desirable outcomes. That's where the focus is for us right now. So it's, I mean, it sounds crazy that I'm sitting here as a salesperson talking about developing needs, but we need, we need more awesome IT developers out there right now than ever before to get us all access to the data. Yeah. And Janet, um, I would also say that, uh, and Heather, I, I hopefully would agree with, with me on this, is that we need the agency side to be receptive to looking beyond gender and age and the in the when we start negotiating. It can't just go right to the negotiation, which we do, you know, we're very good at it. And, and I'm sure I'm sure Missy's very good at it too. But we do need to start taking a look at it in, in, in a more holistic way. And uh, that will will definitely help. Yeah, I actually was going to say the same thing and to agree with Missy and John that 
you know, it's all about data driven. That's to me, it's been the buzzword for a couple of years now, data driven, data driven. And at the end of the day, I feel that station ownership groups and all of local in general has really come to the table with some of that information for us to ingest. So we are looking to the stations. If you have that data from who is watching your programming or who is um, any data that you have about our audience in general, we want that data. We like search for that data. And while we have internal things that we deal with on a daily basis and audience segments that we have to kind of guide our buys, it is so great that stations are now coming to us with things to look at differently than we've looked at in the past. So hopefully on both sides, we're really coming to that agreement because it is in the best benefit of all of our clients overall. And, and I just want to add. Oh, you know, sorry, that, go ahead. You know, what, what I think is wonderful too, is I think data sort of raises the boats for everyone, but people are looking at it from two very different sides. Um, on the agency side, it's how do I effectively buy the best audience at the best price? And on the station side, it's how do I effectively monetize my finite premium inventory the best? But that said, data helps both parties uh, 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 serve their customers, right? The, the agency serving the advertisers and the station serving the agencies, the advertisers. So I think it's a win for everyone getting additional data into the mix. Is it an expensive proposition to get the Missy and John to get the data that you need to sell on this basis? I, it's very expensive. And so I think we'll have to work in partnership with, with our agency partners on identifying what really matters. You know, I mean, it's, you can go buy anything, right? Credit card purchasing data to pulp data to foot traffic data. I mean, like I can go on and on and on. I think what we need to get to is what really matters and who can bear the cost of that to create the best outcome. But we all can't be buying everything, right? So it's who's, I think at the end of the day, who's going to shoulder that and get the most out of the investment. But I do think, um, I think Heather's right. I think it's coming together and, and understanding what's most important to someone and, and what kind of, like, obviously, you know, I won't speak for John, but I might be willing to spend more money on certain data sets that I can ingest that create a great outcome for Heather if, if we work on that together. And if that gets me back a higher percentage of the buy or a better partnership with an advertiser, we need to look at those. I think, I think a piece of segmentation yeah. kind of plays into that discussion. It's like, let's create segmentation all day long to get to the best outcomes. If we can identify more specific ROIs on particular data sets, I'm super into that right now too. I think we'll learn a lot from, from that. Yeah, uh, Janet, as far as the, cost is a lot of this is in our cost of doing business already we have a lot of the data in-house we have a, an exceptional marketing research and, and insights team already at uh, at disney at sales local so we're able to do a lot of it already and as i said before these are things that we've had for a long time so we just need to incorporate them more and i think one of the great things and and um about the position that that i'm in and a lot of us a lot of us are in but but you know specifically to, to us at disney we're in a lot of these businesses already so we have a lot of this data retail travel entertainment so we we have to really we have to lean on our companies a little bit to get some uh added information and bring that back to our clients of what we know we were in the movie business we're in the entertainment business so we we can get a lot of that but a lot of the data that we that missy and i have already in house uh, hopefully we can start utilizing that a little bit more. And, and as I said earlier, that data should open up our full schedule, our full complementary schedule. One of the things that, that I think uh, Missy and I would agree on is as sellers, but also as, as, as stations, we understand who our audience is very, very well. We promote our own shows within our own uh, to our own audiences, and how we do that, we know where to reach people. So, with that, with that said, we're we're uh, we have a lot of this information already there. First party data, third party data, we have it. But is it difficult to sort of connect the dots between the information you have on who's likely to purchase or who intends to purchase something with the audience data that you have for individual shows? I think, look, yes, it, it is, you know, linear doesn't 
always lend itself to that. I think that's why, at least I know that's why all of these companies have diversified so much and gotten into the addressable business as, as we have, right? We know that addressable and linear together is additive, right? We know that um, both on the linear side and then on the addressable side, local as its entirety is the last mile and we will get people to act it. But as we talked about earlier, um, I believe in some of that quote unquote waste, uh, that, that, that bad word, because that is helping people hear the, hear the message and then go out and react. If we can then push them on our, um, our addressable compliments, then that's great. And then as the technology gets better with 3.0, with, uh, with our, our, our syndicated data, as that gets better, we will be able to do it more, more and more. I think, Janet, to that point, it's all about the funnel. It's all about driving people to make that final purchase. Right. And we're going to have to use multiple touch points in order for them to get to that final purchase. But all of this data, all of the information that we're able to get from the stations, what we're able to get from our own internal systems is really getting us closer to reaching that consumer, um, along with uh, multiple other consumers or potential consumers along the way. So, Missy, when you're when you're engaged in segmentation and optimization activities, are they largely done through automated platforms? Right now, um, Gina, yeah. I mean, again, we've built some platforms internally um, at Scripps that that we're using for some of those solutions for sure. Uh, in some cases, it's partnering without outside vendors with, you know, with good AI technology and, and things like that. But um, look, I'd be lying if I tell you that it's seamless and awesome and it works great today because it doesn't. Realistically, we are, I mean, to get to like some utopian thing that's in my head, which would take a whole nother hour to talk about what that utopia looks like. I mean, we're easily three years out on that. So it's, it's kind of, my analogy always has been, how do we change the tires in the air while we're flying the 747, right? <laughs> we can't land the plane and keep it grounded while we solve for all this, we have to keep going. And so you're kind of running parallel tracks of continuing to get data, figure out how to digest it, ingest it, use it today, while building the kind of platform that really gets to kind of some ultimate outcomes that's the super fun stuff to talk about, but it's it's difficult to keep it all going at once. And again, it's not inexpensive, but, but you figure out how to get it done because it's important. We're gonna have to get there. And Janet, poor Janet's heard me say it 8,000 times. You know, I want Heather to give me $30,000 and she's gonna know that I sold 300 of whatever she wanted to sell. Like that's my ultimate goal, but, but it's just gonna be a process. Right, right. Well, I wanted to, Will, I'm going to get to you in a minute, but I wanted to get the, um, the buyer, the planning and buyer perspective first. Heather, I know you're, you're one of the leaders when it comes to segmentation and optimization in the spot space. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the campaigns that you've done. Um, if it's sensitive to uh, mention client names, maybe you could give us, you know, what sector they're in. Yeah, I think we've been pretty successful as an agency in really looking at those defined segments and using it to either optimize our day part mix or look at what network, networks we're buying or program selections. And Dentsu is able to ingest our M1 data, and I'll get to that in one second, but we actually look at the segments and we are able to define our buying and show where we over-index or under-index for any of our clients that we work with. Um, several years ago, we purchased Merco, which is a company that has the M1 platform. And that they as a company continued to see where the future focus was going to be on audience and really defining the audience as the number one goal of putting a plan together. And M1, it's essentially a people-based research company, and it's able to target any people wherever they're at with these tagged digital IDs. And with that, I think at this point, we're up to a database of over 300 million people. And for all of our clients, we're able to create an audience segment. And then M1 data allows us to really target that true audience and to continue to segment and to continue to optimize throughout the course of any of our media plans. 
Um, we work with, you know, publisher addressable marketplace. We're able to look at large scale. Um, a lot of that right now is through national and it's also through a lot of addressable. It's driving a lot of our addressable buying when we're looking at it. But also at the end of the day, we're able to measure what we're going to market with. So we're able to see the lift for any of our products. We're able to see some sales outcomes. And when with doing this, we can use our client's first party information to mirror it up with publisher information. And albeit it is scrubbed clean, so we can't see all of that. But at the end of the day, it's really people-based marketing. We're actually able to go in and target on a personal level. Um, we have automotive clients that have really embraced the M1 platform and the results that it has given them. We have some retail clients as well that have been able to do it. Um, but, you know, above and beyond just the M1 data, we actually can partner with Comscore with M1 and look at certain results to guide our programming and to, to guide our day part mix for some grocery store chains. So those have been things that have really been successful for us. Um, we work on the Hudson campaign or the, um, yeah, the Hudson MX campaign and or platform, I should say, that has been very helpful. And so something Missy had said earlier, you know, we have all these tools and we, it's great that it can send us the information of how a buy should look and it should show us the programming that we should buy. But there's always the need for that personal touch to make sure that we're ingesting all that data and having the conversations about where the audience is at. So we also keep that in mind as we're going to market with any one of our campaigns. So what are you not able to do today that you really want to be doing in this, in this particular space, specific to spot TV? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, Spot TV has the masses, Spot Radio has the masses, and that's where we know we need to be. That's where we know our consumers are sitting in front of and watching on a daily basis, no matter what sort of um, uh, device that they're watching it on. And any time that we can reach someone on a one-to-one -one basis, that of course is the holy grail. We wanna be able to reach those people on a one-to-one -one basis um, for some of our clients and some of our products. But John said earlier, there is still an audience out there to be in front of in order to get them to come to our client or come to our brand. So that of course is, is equally as important. Um, anytime that we can use any of the data that I talked about to be more localized, that's where we wanna be because we know that that is where the audience is at. Will, tell us how all of this fits into Wide Orbit's platform when it comes to segmentation. I mean, uh, you have a, just explain it. I, I can't ask this, this question properly. I will absolutely do my best. I just want to point out that one of the challenges with everything here in, in the segmentation optimization is all fantastic. But at the end of the day, there's historically been a currency that's transacted. It's typically Nielsen, sometimes Comscore. Until that changes, all the tools that we're talking about are just better ways to figure out what to buy, um, but they don't necessarily translate into sort of the final spot rate because what stations are selling and what advertisers and agencies are buying are a prediction of what the future is going to be. And they still have to have that measurement to come in. So in a world where that no longer happens, I think there's lots of other possibilities, but right now, everything that we do still kind of has to go back down to what are we getting measured on? And I wanted to touch upon that because we've added some functionality to our core WO traffic system, which we call ADO which stands for audience delivery optimization. So our, our, our software I hope is good because our placer engine maximizes the value of a log. It puts the highest dollar spots onto that premium finite precious inventory that a station has. So we've always been trying to make sure that stations get the most money of all the competing demand that comes in. This tool set then comes in, which we call ADO, and it reworks the log to get the best viewership for the spots. So one buy might be, going back to Nielsen, adults 25 to 54. Another might buy might be females 18 plus. Different uh, uh, content indexes differently to those audiences. Our ADO tool set will basically reorganize the log, still with all the buyer constraints in place, to get the best audience for those buys. And so what we're trying to do is, yes, there's a spot and the spot has a finite rate, 
but what's being sold is an audience and we're trying to get the maximization of that audience for the stations to the buy side. So I think that's just one small area. And as this industry moves towards more of a CPM based model, perhaps pay for performance more and more, being able to maximize the effectiveness of one's inventory, not just the price, but the delivery becomes more and more important. So that's one area that we're working on, Janet. So is a lot of the data that is used within the wide orbit platform in order to do these kinds of transactions and this kind of research, is this done, uh, is, it, is it, do the station groups themselves have to give you a certain amount of data so that they, they overlay their, whatever they're, they, they bring to the party their data and then you sort of. Um, yeah, we, we are agnostic. Um, uh, you can bring in custom audience data, you can bring in Nielsen data, you can bring in Comscore data. Um, our tools basically take that data set and then optimize based upon what's provided. Um, we do not have the, the, the measurement. Some of the customers here can uh, uh, do a much, much better job of telling what their audience is. We're just a software provider. We need those data sets to crunch. And we will, of course, you know, continue to provide, which I still think are vitally important, reach frequency models. We're extending our order connect tool set to do better posting and stewardship. We're trying to do things to make the station lives better. But with regard to data, we need that provided to our tools for the optimizations. Okay, okay. So Heather, can you give us a, a comparison between uh, different media sectors, when you look at what you're able to do on uh, spot versus digital or other forms of media, what, what, how do they differ right now? Yeah, the recent challenge has really been what we can do with addressable TV and digital platforms or programmatic with not only optimization, but also with segmentation and then comparing that to what we can do with local TV. That has been our biggest challenge probably today. Um, however, I mean, local TV and radio continue to be utilized because as I mentioned before, the mass scale that it reaches and the, the local nature of the programming it carries and the ability really to geo target. I mean, this year has been the biggest example of that as we've had certain states open up before others due to COVID. So we know the value of local TV. I mean, we live, eat and breathe it every single day. Um, and thankfully local TV, they've been developing more effective audience targeting. Um, we've heard about a couple, of it, a couple of them today. We know that stations continue to look at both attribution, look at somewhat of return on investment tools that we can look at. And all of that really continues to justify um, the heavy weight levels that we continue to place in local TV. It is not a situation right now where we are moving money out of local TV in order to go places where we can really target more efficiently um, because they don't have the scale in order for us to do it. So I do feel that it's a partnership right now between the local station and their environment and the agencies to get to a place where we know the dollars that we're placing on local TV, not only are they there because of mass reach, mass reach media, but also they're there because that's where our audience is at. And we just need to be able to continue to prove that. Um, I think that linear and really coupled with digital, any of those activations really allow for controlling like frequency capping or how are we gonna give incremental reach to any certain campaign. And also it, it enables us to look a lot at creative optimization. So while I do think there are some um, pitfalls when it only comes to really reaching that one-to-one -one consumer. I don't think that's what local television is used for, but I do think that the linear mass media continues to really get closer to that holy grail I mentioned earlier of reaching a person one-to-one. -one. Well, do you, do you think that as TV station groups become more and more adept at segmentation and optimization, is it going to change the media mix in terms of the amount of money that you're throwing their way? Be careful, Heather. Be careful here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I will say I think there's other reasons why dollars stay with the local media. I mean, 
I mentioned them earlier, we have the fact that it, it hits the mass audience. Um, it, as much money as we wanna throw at some other forms of media, we're just not gonna hit all the eyeballs or the ears that we truly need to hit in order to sell the product. Um, what we don't want to do is miss out on those consumers that are really in the market for our products. So when we have to look really closely at the programming we're purchasing, in order to do that, that's the only way we can do it with local mass media and with all the data that is provided that way. I don't see a future where more local dollars are taken away and purchase on a national scale, except for those clients that of course are nationally. Um, I do see it kind of reversing a little bit in the future. Oh, well, that's Janet, Janet I, I will say that, you know, um, we are a very mature business and, and, and I think that performance history is, is, is really the best research you can get. And we know what works and what doesn't work to what Heather's saying. We have plenty of clients that know that when they go off and when they come on, how it affects us. But we are all, I think everybody here is very, very uh, invested in, in local. And, um, you know, as we go to a more impression-based model, as, as we've talked about it over the last several years, it's going to help with us buying local in general. So local, we know it's changing. We, we understand it, but, but I think every, and this is why we're all diversified and, and well positioned for, for the future. And, and I think, you know, if, if, if we could leave one with one thing here, and, and I would say that you don't have to be addressable to be uh, to be targeted, right? If the, we could just understand that that linear can do the targeting, uh, it doesn't all have to be addressable, but addressable certainly is a fantastic compliment for all of us moving forward. And uh, Heather, we're going to hold you to the fact that no more dollars are leaving local. I knew that. I knew that was going to come back to home. <laughs> That's so going to be the soundbite you all heard. I know that'll be in the paper. <laughs> Thirty seconds for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to throw a question to you, Will. I wanted to get in. A little bit. I know that Wide Orbit has recently integrated some some new audience delivery optimization features to your system. Can you talk a little bit about how that's changing um, the whole process at Wide Orbit? Sure. And as you mentioned earlier about data, our ADO tool is only as good as the predictions that it gets. And so, why we're super happy to partner with PVX is. For many, many years now, um, ITN has been doing these national unwireds and they guarantee it much like a national um, cable net does. So they had to get very, very good at determining what the delivery was going to be for the local stations. So our partnership with um, PVX um, provides the data feed for our tools to accurately predict what the future is going to look like. And I think that's one of the most important things um, um, is, is uh, the negotiation on the cost per point, what the rating is. Um, if we can get to an agreement on what the future can look like, that's a great step in the right direction. And it really is important for our optimization tools using, you know, whether you call it data science or ML, machine learning, artificial intelligence, whatever, getting a very, very good prediction of the future is vitally important for our optimizations. Um, along with the log optimization, we're working with them for several other optimizations as well. Um, going upstream into sort of the, the, the booking process, the plan building, um, um, figuring out the most efficient way to package up the inventory is vitally important. How to slot it from week to week um, is vitally important. And then going back even to the sales estimates, you know, using their predictive engine to help influence what the spot rates should be. And then translating that all down into either CPPs or CPMs um, for the buy side. So we're super excited about the partnership we have with them. So I was going to ask you what's on the drawing board. I think you just answered that question. <laughs> progress, right? Yes, I I hope to do more and more. Um, again, I'm a I. Predicting the future is incredibly difficult. It's and and all of media is a prediction of what the future is going to look like, regardless of what's being purchased, right? And the the better data you have, and the more accurate the predictions, the better. So Excellent. yes, thank you, Janet. Sure. So um, I wanted to find out, I'd asked Heather about uh, specific campaigns or whatever she could tell me of what had been done in the segmentation optimization front. I want to now get um, some input from, from John and Missy in terms of the kinds of transactions you've done so far and, and um, 
you know, can you can you speak to any campaigns or any learnings from what's happened today? Um, I will tell you that we're 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 in the um, you know we do a lot of brand lift and attribution studies po uh, both pre doing a campaign and then mostly a lot of them post uh, and we have it from anywhere from travel to auto to retail, QSR, CPG, financial. Um, uh, clients. So we, we have a lot of them in the, in the travel category. We just recently did, did one around, uh, something we did in the Oscars and showed the, the future consideration lifts showed, um, awareness of destinations. It was for a, uh, an airline and, um, and also specifically about that airline. What, what were the thoughts from, from the viewers and the, and the, uh, the audience about that specific airline? So we do those, uh, those, those are usually done after somebody has invested a lot of money in one of our, uh, our great 10 poll events, but we, we do them on, we, you know, we want to invest in our clients. It is in our best interest for our clients to be successful. It, it always is. It always will be. Um, and so therefore we're, we're willing to do these because as I said, we, we take pride in knowing our audience and we also, uh, it's an opportunity for us to get to know our audience a little bit more. Again, using that past performance history to then go and talk to other clients about what we know is successful is very, very important to us. Missy? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Gina, a good example for us um, is we've been able to partner with some events that don't necessarily run on our station right? Like a, a golf event that may be on NBC, but we're ABC in a particular market. Um, but creating, creating specialized events and opportunities, and then being able to geo-target whatever we've built as a specific client solution. And then inside of that, um, target, um, you know, whether we're after, a, you know, I pick on a QSR sometimes, but, you know, whether we're trying to find or be worried about the hamburger eater in there versus the taco eater versus whatever it's going to be. We've had real success in creating specialized community events, whether they air on our station or not, and then targeting a specific for a, you know, a specific brand advertiser, targeting a, a really particular individual inside a group. We've done several of those partner projects this year and the results have been outstanding. And to Heather's point, I mean, we, we did a hashtag, uh, you know, in terms of a rating because we didn't own the event in the first place. It didn't exist, but they saw a lift in all kinds of things that John mentioned, right? Like they'll see a lift throughout all the Google analytics tracking and, and website traffic and, and even foot traffic. I mean, we're tracking all that stuff now, but those have been really fun things to tackle. And we've said this word a lot today, but if you've got an agency or a client partner that's willing to do something out of the box that way, um, it's just, it's a ton of fun. And I think it was John that touched on this. Like we can do that stuff right now today. Think about when we really get to addressable land. I mean, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, uh, Janet, I mean, It'll be really fun. Janet, I'd, I'd be also very missed it, not to mention the fact that what, why we're all here today and our stations are a connection to the community and, and we really do um, have tremendous involvement in the community, whether it be our pride events or, you know, I can, I'll speak for New York in, in our Puerto Rican day uh, events, whether we do uh, things with our marathon, those are ways to segment and target as well. So we'll take on certain events because we know it's such a big uh, connection to the community. Uh, and then we can bring advertisers into those events and going back to whatever the rating it does, it doesn't quite matter to the fact that the, the impact it will have on, on the community. So very, very important of our connection with, with our, with our audience. And, and uh, I think, you know, that's this year more than any, how important it was to, to connect to the community, vaccine related advertising, political, as we talked about, it has been bigger than ever before and has proven why local is so, so important. And one last point on that, Gina, I'd be remiss if I just, I feel like every call I have to pound that, you know, at the root of everything that everybody does is great content. Um, and if we can still solve for really good content at the local level, that, that really resounds with our local communities, um, that's good for all. 
Um, you know, the days of, um, you know, we use a phrase a lot, like, we don't need to be covering the vacant house fire anymore. No one was hurt. It was in the middle of nowhere. The, the days of all that stuff needs to be over. Um, and I think we also, you know, we're at a time too on the content side, like we need to focus on positive, good local content stories and events. And, you know, when John talks about pride or what they did uh, with a Puerto Rican day, like that's the stuff that's just, it's really touching people more than ever. I'd be remiss if I just didn't take it back. The root of everything is just good content. I think that's what Heather's after. Like, give me good content that speaks to a really particular piece of an audience. They'll find a client that wants that. Right. Um, I just, I love that part of our business. I'm going to open it up to the, the questions from the audience. We have one from Margaret Branshaw who asks, um, hang on a sec. Are agencies willing to buy a qualitative rating combining a true rating combined with a target qualitative, a targeted qualitative rating? Yeah, I think we're in a catch 22 on that because I mean, at the end of the day, lowest cost by default still remains the benchmark for which local media is evaluated. And Will mentioned it earlier. And to that extent, it's also how it's optimized. And our media culture recently has really become more about data infused um, information. So we have new data, we have new tools, we have new capabilities. You know, at the end of the day, we have new activations, optimization, and then throw on top of all of that, lift and ROI analytics. So we're beginning to look differently at, or I should say, we're beginning to look about beyond just the delivery of impressions, but we need to make sure we're still optimizing correctly. And if we focus on that lift and that return on investment metrics and attribution measurement, it actually saves our money, our clients' money. So we will hopefully get to a day where it's not just about the lowest cost per thousand or the lowest cost per point that you can bring in the market. There, there has to be a way that we can look at both the qualitative and the quantitative and mirror them together. I feel that we're getting to that point. I don't think we're here now. Um, we need to continue to make sure we're minimizing the waste of audience and, and really reaching and truly focusing on that segment that's going to drive consumers into the showroom or into the stores or into buying our clients' products and services. But I, I don't disagree. I think we need to have some sort of medium where it's both qualitative and quantitative, but you know, bottom line, we need to maximize the medium value rather than just minimizing our media cost. So Abby Auerbach is asking how important it is to move to impressions uh, in order to advance segmentation and optimization. Is that really key? Well, I'll say just from my point of view and then someone else can jump in. We actually do buy on impressions already. We've been doing that for a few years now. Um, and that was one of the reasons why we opted to do it that way. So we are looking not only at local television, but we're looking at all other mediums combined when we're buying off impressions. So we already do that for that reason. Right, and, and, I, and I will say that um, we, we will transact the way that our clients wanna transact, but uh, it is it is very important that we that we um, are in in that game because it's it's going to bring all of local together and be able to buy an impression. Now, we will will price accordingly because we still are in the supply and demand business. But um, but yes, it's very very important. And I think across the board, everybody who's on the on the call today, I think Abby that was a planted question by Abby. Uh, <laughs> she knows she knows that it's very important for us. Yeah yeah. So yeah, have, I, just, I just want to add to you, right? Yeah. Rating precision is a challenge as the viewership declines. So moving to thousands is just a better model for everyone. The 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 content gets more credit. It just it's the I, I personally believe it's the right direction to move in. Like just do it. Yeah. Well, and Shannon, I want to add on that just two things, right? Like let's all agree on the definition of an impression across all platforms that it that it differs from digital linear still makes me a little bit crazy. Like we need to come together as an industry and decide is it is it 60 seconds across every platform equals an impression or is it five or is it an hour? Hopefully not an hour, but you know what I mean? Um, I think that's, that's, that's important I think for everybody at some point because I think if we can agree to something that's fair that would lift to Will's point, that would lift the overall impression level. Um, 
I do think that's, I just think that's important um, in that. And look, I also think as an industry, it's going to make it very, very difficult for us moving forward if we still try to run this business on like posting, at least from the broadcaster side, on like day, date, and time. Like we got to get to a more broader spectrum of measurement or we don't have a chance of, of hitting any old delivery methods. I, I think we just need to really focus on what comes next and what makes sense for an industry and not just for our side, for, for the agency, like for all of us, we just need to figure it out. Um, and, and I think the sooner we can do that, the better, um, but it's just going to take some smart people locking themselves in a room for a while and get to agreement. But, but that time is definitely now, at least in my opinion. And I think Heather brought it up earlier and how important spot is, you know, in, in, in New York, if we do an, a, a 1.5 adults 2554 in our late news, that's 100,000, approximately 100,000 people every half hour. So is that valued more than say 100,000 people across uh, other uh, mediums? I don't know, we have to figure that out. It's important for us to, to take a look at what is the value of that, um, but, does it put more of an emphasis on the importance of it or, or not? So it's, it's, um, it's, but it's going that route. Well, well how, sorry, how John, I, 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 one thing that's vitally important is getting credit for that unduplicated reach. Um, you, you need, I think every broadcast right. needs right. some type of attribution, whether it's 18 plus or what, whatever, they should get credit for all the purchasable eyeballs that they reached. So that's my two cents. I agree. I agree with you. So we have a question from RJ Hotai who asks, how confident is the panel in Nielsen's ability to produce reliable segmentation universes and impressions in light of their recent much publicized difficulties? Oh boy. I'll let someone else take that yeah. one. I think everyone feel, you know, is gonna let someone else answer. I, <laughs> it's it's, it's what we have to work with. Yeah, well, let's go to the next question. And if something, if one of you uh, thinks of an answer, um, in the meantime, just type up. But we'll move on to William McKenna's question, which is based upon the discussion today, I sense that we are unable to precisely link linear and addressable impressions in terms of reach and frequency. Attempts to model this relationship is still in early days because of data coverage gaps. So buyers and sellers are using audience segmentation in terms of purchaser profiles attributed or deterministic to close the information gap. Is this statement correct? Yeah, I, I do think it is correct to an extent. I mean, we addressable can only go so far and we have to create lookalike data based on um, our consumer and what we're getting from the vendors. And based on that, it is to, um, to that point, I mean, we're filling in the gaps that way. We're trying to find that lookalike data and getting as precise as we, per we can. That's why, and I keep going back to this, it's so important that the non-addressable approach and the mass medium of what local TV provides as defined as we can get with that audience on certain campaigns, that's gonna make it better for everyone all, all around because there are still the gaps that are out there. Um, and I don't know how quickly those will be filled. So we have a couple of questions from William McKenna again, as well as Carrie Austin, who are asking about ATSC 3.0 and whether, first of all, that's a game changer in terms of accelerating the growth of all of this. And um, you know how how eager you are to get those addressable capabilities or direct me measurement capabilities. I would say very eager. <laughs> <laughs> um, like the the faster we get there, the better. There's you know it's just there's a process to it. Um, there's a there's clearly people on this call and a lot of uh, broadcast groups that are trying to get there, trying to get there yesterday. Um, and more and more markets are testing, more partners in markets are testing, but yeah, there's, there's tremendous value, um, no doubt. I, I don't, I'd be interested to hear Heather's answer to that, actually. I was going to say, I was actually interested in your answer to that thing, but I, I mean, I do think it will be a game changer. I think anytime we can get more information, more data, more ability to really drill down is going to be um, a growth in that field. So I, I would agree with everything that you just said, Lindsay. I did. I'll add. Oh, uh, 
Next Gen TV or ATSC3 uh, elevates uh, local over the air broadcasters to the same game that the CTV, OTT, and arguably the glass providers are in already. So it will enable true addressability, um, certainly to the household level and or device level for that matter. So I really do think it's vitally important for the industry to just, everyone wants addressable. I, I still am a firm believer in you want unduplicated reach and I cannot stand the way digital ad servers serve the same say video ad over and over and over again like they don't know I'm watching content. Um, so I really want to get the broadcast experience across the board. But yes, ATSC3 or Next Gen TV is absolutely the, the next step in over the air broadcasting. So we only have mm -hmm. about five minutes left and I thought it might be interesting to, to just very quickly get from each of you your views on what the, the greatest challenges are moving forward and the greatest opportunities. Missy, you want to start? Sure. I think um, I think the challenge right now is just um, uh, identifying the speed and the cost at which we can make all of this merge and come together. Uh, we talked about that early on in, in this call, right? Like we can get to all kinds of data, but um, it, it's gonna be uh, how quick we can get to market uh, with all of it. And then train again, train and develop uh, from our side, um, cell staffs to be able to give Heather really good insights into that data once we put it together. Um, I, I think that's both the challenge, but then also in that is, is the greatest opportunity. Because with addressable um, next gen TV, um, better just better measurement data overall helps everybody. I mean, this is really simplistic, but man, getting data back out of 300 tele 300,000 television sets in a market as opposed to 600 meters, man, bring that to us all day long and then really knowing and learning, about the viewers and exactly what they're doing on those sets, that is a game changer for our industry. But getting it all, all to get it built, get it to collide, and then teaching people to really how to extract what matters, um, it's all a challenge and an opportunity. But it's, it's, it's going to be fun. I've said it a million times today. It's, it's going to be crazy fun. Will, what do you, what do you, from your standpoint at Wide Orbit, what are the big challenges and opportunities? So I firmly believe the biggest challenge in spot TV is just making it easier to buy and sell. Like that is the fundamental thing. It's just painful. There's so much labor on the station side and on the agency side. And more data right now is equaling more work. And, 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 We've got to optimize the, the machines to do a lot of the work that the people are doing today. And that's everything from negotiation to these dreaded make goods that happen because things didn't air the way they should. And then I think the number one most important thing is, is and I think Missy said it, it's agreeing upon measurement. Like, what did I get? Like, I think that is vitally, vitally important. And, you know, the historic currencies have not been that accurate. And um, it's sort of what the industry has. So, yeah, making it easier to buy and sell and uh, automation across the board is, I think, the most important challenge for everything that's happening right now. But John, when you think about the opportunities, do you see optimization and segmentation as being a way to really ramp up spot revenue? Is this like a, a major um, way of improving results? Yeah, I mean, yes, I think, as I said earlier, you know, th there is a big opportunity and it's a challenge, as Missy mentioned, you know, truly letting the data build the schedules and, and the willingness of, of, the, of our clients of that happening. You know, if they're more open to building schedules based on the knowledge on, on those knowledge, then, then we're all for it and we, we can marry that up and, you know, move past just agent demo currency negotiations. But, you know, we, I'm all, you know, we're all for anything that'll make it easier to buy and sell uh, local TV. I, I'm, I'm all for it. I do think that our differentiating factor is the, is the, uh, the side that people play in that and the role that people are sellers play in that. And so I do think there needs to be a combination of both. Is there a hybrid model that's out there? We, we got to walk before we run on this. 
and and the ability for for our sellers to be in front of uh, Heather's folks and, and and working with them and explaining things and going through it. Look, if we're going to have more data and we're going to have more information, we need to be able to explain it because it's not going to just be in a system. So how do we how do we do both and how do is there a hybrid model out there that we can uh, we can attach ourselves to? Uh, I think that's that's the opportunity moving moving forward. But I, I feel very good. Feel I feel that the future of uh, local uh, is extremely bright, and I feel very comfortable where local linear and broadcast is uh, is headed and where we are right now. Well, Heather, any final thoughts about you know what the challenges are and what the op opportunity is? Yeah, I, you know, they've all said it very well. I agree with everything that they said. I think they've covered everything. You know, I think there still is always going to be the concern of cost and efficiencies, and we need to come up with a currency that maybe does combine both, um, both data sets. But I do think there is such a huge opportunity for all of the new viewership insights. I think it will present us with huge new opportunities for marketers to just build holistic view of not only TV planning, but they can improve our optimization. And it, at the end of the day, it's going to really drive measurable results across all of local TV. Well, we're right at the two o'clock mark. So I want to just thank all four of you for giving us such great information. Um, thank you so much, Will Offerman from Wide Orbit, Heather Gundry from Dentsu X, Missy Evanson from Scripps, and John Camera from Disney. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Janet. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.